ended up moving to New York with the same bank to in a completely different area. I was in uh, uh, on the train floor. Um, I was actually in a, in a well, without going to technically in a proprietary trading desk. So we were basically trading with the money of the bank, uh, which is a very prestigious job. Uh, but and it was in New York in Wall Street, but it well. was. In Two thousand eight. So two thousand eight. Oh, <laughs> didn't work out very well. I got, I got to New York at the end of two thousand and seven, and as I got there, um, I was delayed. I was supposed to be there earlier, a few months earlier, but for some technical reasons, I got delayed. And um, by the time I got to New York, I realized that there was a mu- the beginning of a massive crisis. Basically, we would see that. It's like a tsunami was about to hit, but the only thing you could see was just uh, at the horizon, you could see this massive wave that was building up. And it's like, oh, this is going to come to us now. Uh, so I spent a year in New York, and it was a life experience. I mean, I have I, probably I could write a book about just that year, seen from the inside. And uh, yeah, I have... Um, very, very interesting life experience. Um, one I would not want to repeat, but but still fantastic. Can uh, you share a story? Can you share a story from that time? Uh, because you were at the epicenter of that uh, that event that has gone in history now, the whole year. Uh, uh, not I, I, I was in the epicenter. Uh, geographically, I was actually in one of the main epicenters of the local epicenters because I was in this top top investment bank uh, at the very top floor of uh, this massive huge building where the trading floor was. Would and you like to name the mention the name the no, bank? I will not name the bank, but it's one of the very big ones. There are there are four or five, so yeah, one of those. And uh, <laughs> I was in the very top floor, and uh, in this, in these, uh, uh, yeah, on my floor there were probably two thousand traders. Like it's quite incredible how many people you can fit in a. No, I don't know. Maybe not two thousand, or maybe maybe less. But there were a lot of people because it's like a, a cramped up. Yeah, very cramped and etc. And uh, and you can feel what's going on in the market on the trading floor. Like in a moment where, you know, there were a few days that were really, really tricky. I mean, uh, apart from after Lehman went down, Lehman Brothers went down, there were some moments where, you know, everybody was a risk. Everything was a risk. Actually, people don't even realize how serious what happened in 2008, how serious it was for the world stability. You know, I I worked in this in this space for a long time, and 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 sometimes I get well during that time I got really annoyed at how um, people on the outside were very easy to cast a judgment on the banks and accusing the banks of a lot of things without understanding what important role these players and these institutions actually play in the market. Like everything that you do is based on a banking system. The reason why they say it's too big to fail, etc., and all is because they actually are really important for the financial stability, your ability to go and buy a loaf of bread in the, in the store is because you have a credit card and there is an account that is based on some someone's servers and if there is a problem there, you don't have access to that. You are screwed, not just the bank. Um, so it was a very, very important uh, moment in time, and uh, and you could feel the you could feel the the silence. Sometimes there was there would be almost an artificial silence that would drop. You would have all the screens with Bloomberg's and and all the the various channels that were. They would talk, but you could hear the traders basically whispering very, very softly because no one actually even wanted to just say something loud because people were seriously scared. Um, incredible. Or when, uh, without going into the details, but when something really big happened that saved, seemed to save the day that our CEO basically did. And... Uh, 
and and the day after the CEO walked, the, the CEO came to a meeting on my floor, the CEO of the bank, and as he stepped out of the lifts, um, the whole floor stood up and gave him a standing ovation. But I, I, st- I have goosebumps. Even goosebumps. Now, remembering that moment, it was in, incredible. Like this is that that is the finance or corporate finance at the highest possible levels. It's a, uh, it's difficult to describe, and uh, you know, if you, if I could give more details. Maybe it could be a bit easier. But in general, I would say it, it's when there is one man and one deal that actually manages to create a that's a ripple effect that affects the whole economy. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's really difficult to overestimate the importance of certain things. From the outside, you might not see them. You might, okay, yeah, this is just a deal that someone did. Uh, it's just a, a round of funding that, uh, I don't know, a company did, and it doesn't matter. But the reality is that it matters massively because if that hadn't come through and the company had gone down, bankrupt, for instance, the ripple effect, it would have taken down half of the financial system and things like this. Wow. So, amazing. So that was... Incredible life experience, very, very hard personally. 